Hey everyone, and thanks for jumping back into the Cryptoverse. Today we are going to be talking about Ethereum. We're going to be looking at the primary logarithmic regression ban to try to identify the next speculative bubble. So if you guys like this content, then please subscribe to the channel. Click the bell icon to turn your notifications on and like the video. And if you want to discuss these charts, then check out the Telegram channel here in the bottom right hand corner of your screen, which you can also find a link to in the description below. So the first thing I wanted to do was just provide the, the last chart of the video first. So you, you get an idea of where we're going. And now I'm going to walk you through how I get there so that you can appreciate you know, the, the methods that I took to come to my conclusions. So you know, a lot of people will make price predictions all the time. And they will just, typically, it's based off, you know, an emotion or a feeling or what they want. Um, on this channel, I, I try to at least provide some type of evidence for it, rather than just throwing out numbers. So I hope you can appreciate that. At the end of the day, you know, this is not financial advice. This is pure speculation. Um, no one knows what is going to happen. Um, but with those disclaimers, you know, I think it's at least worthwhile to, to look at the math and, and see what it suggests where we could be heading. So let's jump in. So here's the price of Ether. This is the price, um, you know, since it launched and this, the y-axis is a logarithmic scale. So note the distance between each major tick is 10x. So just let that sink in if that concept is, is new to you. Now, a lot of people will, will talk about logarithmic regression and, and they'll measure things by where they were at their all-time high. But what, what I've done here is I've identified you know, what I would consider to be a non-bubble data. So it's hard to, you know, it's hard to really fit data in speculative bubbles um, just because in the nature of, of what's going on there, you know, it can, you know, whether whether Ethereum, whether Ether had gone to say five hundred dollars or even if it had gone up to three thousand dollars, you know, predicting the exact top is is fairly hard to do. And then using that metric to identify, you know, how far down you are from your all-time high is somewhat irrational because you're using an irrational metric when dumb money was pouring into the market to identify the health of the asset later on. So what I've done here is I've I've only included uh, non-bubble data, which is somewhat discretionary, of course, um, to then fit a logarithmic regression line to the data. And if you're curious what this looks like, it's just 10 raised to, and then everything in, in parentheses, a times the ln of x minus b, where x is the number of days. Um, so it's pretty straightforward. And then this is what you get when you fit that. If we were to, and, and I optimized it to try to, to try to reduce the amount of error between these points and the line. Now the issue is that there's a lot of uncertainty in here, so we say let's add some, some band here to try to provide some level of uncertainty in terms of what is a fair valuation price of Ether. And this obviously will expand years and years and years. And, and the band, the width of the band, is somewhat arbitrary, you know, you can make it as, as wide as you want, um, but the point is to try to identify these these speculative bubble phases. So, so this one over here that occurred when Bitcoin went above the 20 week back in 2016, the 20-week moving average, and then this one which occurred when Bitcoin reached its previous all-time high, and then the final one when Bitcoin reached like, you know, nearing the end of its bull run before ultimately coming back down into the band. Now, how can we use this? How can we leverage this information to try to identify where the next peak might be? Now, before I go any further, I want to and I want to reiterate that on this in on this YouTube channel, we talk extensively about lengthening cycles, um, and I have a whole video on it. It's a 40-minute video I published a couple weeks ago on the evidence for lengthening cycles. So I'm not going to cover all of that here, but just know that going forward throughout the video. The reason why I'm, I'm calling for a peak, you know, sometime potentially in say 2023, is because of the evidence for lengthening cycles that I've laid out in the past. So that is the reason. Because um, many of you are going to wonder why I'm not saying the peak is happening in say 2021. I think that cryptocurrency, you know, Bitcoin, Ether, I don't think it's a four year cycle. I think the data proves that. Um, and because of that, because I feel like there's enough evidence to support that it's not a four-year cycle and that all the evidence more so points to lengthening cycles, we're going to use this idea of lengthening cycles to identify, you know, how high the next bubble might go. So first, 
let's look at the, the percent difference between the price and the logarithmic regression line. This primary band that you see going through the middle here, we want to look at the percent difference. This is what it looks like. And notice this is the absolute value because if it goes below the line, it would be a negative number, but we're just plotting the absolute value um, and we're using a logarithmic scale, which is important. Now, the issue with Ether is that it's only really been through one market cycle. It's not like Bitcoin, where we were able to look at several market cycles to try to identify the next speculative bubble peak. With Bitcoin, this is what this regression band looks like if you haven't seen the prior video. So I published a video yesterday on, on the same thing for Bitcoin, so go watch that if you're interested in it. Now, you can see that for Bitcoin, this is our non-bubble data, this is our primary logarithmic regression band. If we do the same thing, if we take the, the difference between the price and the log line, this is what we get. We get a, you know, this imaginary line. Clearly, we could easily break it, but at least let's look at this trend. You know, it goes from being overvalued by um, several thousand percent, so 2003, 4, 5, around 5,000 percent. Then the next one is around 3,000 percent. The next one is around 1,000 percent. And we, we kept, you know, we kept saying, okay, well, if we're getting lengthening cycles, then if we extend this out further, then maybe in 2023 or 2024, um, maybe even the end of 2022, but I'm thinking maybe the middle of 2023 is most likely, we would expect to be off that primary regression band by about two to 300%. If you look at where that would be, then that would have, that, that in 2023, the primary band is at around $40,000, which would be say our fair valuation. So if we're about two to 300% above that, then that puts us at around a six figure Bitcoin. So let's look at where Ether would line up on this. So I just superimposed the graph of Ether in time. So the x-axis looks kind of weird basically because I just merged the two graphs together. But just know that they do basically line up. And you can see that in the last market cycle, Ether, the evaluation of it with respect to the trend line, the primary regression band, the percent difference, went significantly higher than it did for Bitcoin. But if you shift this to the prior market cycle of Bitcoin, you see that it lines up almost perfectly. So if you shift the 2017-2018 peak of Ether back to 2013, where Bitcoin had a peak, you can see that they were both overvalued with respect to that primary logarithmic regression band by about the same percentage, namely somewhere around two to three thousand percent, somewhere around that region. So we can say, we can then maybe extrapolate this, which obviously is somewhat dubious. I, I, you know, I'm in the sciences myself. My PhD was in, is, was in engineering, so I know extrapolating is, is not something that you can do lightly, and this is why it becomes you know, hugely speculative as to, as to where I'm going with this, because there is a ton of unknown. Um, there's a ton of unknown data that we, we don't even know, and this, this just takes into account price. It does not take into account other fundamental effects um, or anything like that. Uh, and uh, because of that, obviously take it for what it's worth. But I, I hope that this video at least provides people with a what I consider to be a somewhat grounded prediction that isn't just someone's emotions throwing out a number just so they can get some upvotes. Um, so here we can see that if you compare it to Bitcoin in Bitcoin's prior market cycle before the 2017 bubble, you can see that it's fairly similar. Now, with Bitcoin, it then quickly went to another um, all-time high four years after this one. But I think we are in a lengthening cycle, and I think Bitcoin does drive the cryptocurrency asset class. And for that reason, I don't think that Ether would peak in 2021. Now, I've also been a big proponent of the 20-week moving average. Now, if Bitcoin gets above the 20-week moving average and holds it as support for an extended period of time, then we could see you know, a, a substantial move in the price of Ether because we saw it in 2016 when Bitcoin got above the 20 week. Could it be a coincidence? Maybe it is, but at least you know, you know that, that piece of information now so that if it, if it does uh, you know, give Ether the momentum it needs to, to really get a rally going, then it might be the 20 week because historically that is what helped Ether um, uh, really head off to the races. So let's go back to Ether. Here you can see our percent difference between the price and the primary regression line. Now, if this is our target, 
Why is this our target? Well, if you go back to the prior graph, you can see that with Bitcoin, the next peak was 1,000% overvalued from the regression line. So if we go to Ether and draw out where 1,000% overvaluation would be, it would be in this region in 2023, which is where I'm putting it, because I think that it's a lengthening cycle, and I think that there's a good chance that Ethereum, that Ether, will mimic what Bitcoin does. Even we've seen it throughout the bear market, throughout the bull markets, the volatility, the annualized volatility is greater than Bitcoin's. That, that's to the upside and to the downside. Um, so let's expect this to continue. It might not continue, but let's suppose that it does. So if it does, then it would put our, our, our overvaluation with respect to the trend line at 1,000%. And if we take into account the information from lengthening cycles, it would put it in 2023. So uh, plus or minus some tolerance, obviously. So then if we draw a line from the peak here, we can start to develop the same, you know, imaginary upper bound that Bitcoin has. And if we continue this, maybe we, and this is completely randomly drawn. I did not spend any time drawing this line. I'm just drawing, you know, what theoretically could happen that we get to an overvaluation of 1,000% sometime in 2023. Now, what does this mean? What, what, over, what are we overvaluing? What is the price that is being overvalued by 1,000%? Well, then we need to go back to the regression line. So here, if you look in 2023, you can see that the fair value of Ether in 2023, according to this regression band, which is fit to non-bubble data throughout the last market cycle, the fair valuation would be around a thousand dollars okay so if the fair valuation is around a thousand dollars and we're saying that if the trend continues to emulate what it has done with bitcoin and it's say a thousand percent overvalued at that time we see a speculative bubble then it might go just higher than ten thousand um, dollars so you could see something around that region now, does this mean it has to go to $10,000? No, we might see the volatility reduce even more. Um, you know, we, we might not follow Bitcoin exactly. Um, I mean, we, we won't follow it exactly, but you know, it's not hard to imagine that it, it's, it's, it could be correct within some tolerance. So even if it were to go to say $5,000 or even $15,000, what's a few thousand among friends, we're just looking at, at a macro level picture I, you know, I don't have a, I don't have a crystal ball or anything like that. I'm just using the math that I have to try to identify trends and, you know, patterns over the macro scale to try to provide information to you guys um, rather than just putting out a prediction that's meaningless um, to get people's hopes up. So I do, I mean, while this is a, a an optimistic prediction, uh, I think it is based on something that we can actually look back at and see historical um, or at least data from an, a different cryptocurrency, Bitcoin, and see what it did. So if this were to happen, then if the price, if the fair valuation of Ether were $1,000 in 2023, but we saw another speculative bubble, then it might take us, say, 10 to 11x above $1,000, um, and it might take us, say, you know, it'd be like $11,000 plus or minus a few thousand dollars, okay? So that, I feel like, is what the data suggests. I think this is, you know, theoretically could get us to a $10,000 Ether. Now, a lot of you are going to think that sounds absolutely insane. And how could that, how could that possibly be? Take into account that this is also assuming that Bitcoin is at $100,000 itself. So if Bitcoin is at $100,000 based on the regression band we showed earlier, so you can imagine if, if Bitcoin um, is, let me get back to Bitcoin. I think I passed it actually. Um, so if Bitcoin here is, if it's at $100,000 out in 2023, let's say it has a speculative bubble up to 100,000, then if, you know, Ethereum, Ether getting to 10,000, the ratio is 0.1, which the ratio has been 0.15, I believe, in the past. So it's, it wouldn't be that, you know, insane for, for that to be the valuation of Ether, especially if the valuation of Bitcoin is 100K. Um, so just take that into consideration. Um, and then finally, I just wanted to put on the last graph so you can, you can kind of see what I'm, what I'm thinking. I'm thinking, you know, this continues to say, stay in the regression band for the next, um, you know, couple years. But even though it's staying in the band, the band is increasing. So I would expect the price to increase as well. 
Um, obviously, you could see short-term volatility to the downside, to the upside. Um, daily price moves are irrelevant. A lot of times, monthly price moves are irrelevant. Um, but at least if you look at the macro scale, you can appreciate um, the longer term trend of the asset. And obviously, if we were to go up to around a $10,000 Ether, I would expect us to then retrace, um, not, you know, back to that regression band, which may be around, say, you know, two to $3,000 at the time. Um, so this would be out in, say, 2024 or something like that. So um, if you guys like the channel, again, please subscribe. Uh, turn your notifications on and like the video. Leave a comment below to let me know what you think about it. If you think, um, you know, if, if you think what I'm covering uh, has provided some level of data that you haven't seen before, uh, rather than just giving out a random prediction. If you think I'm leaving something out, I mean, obviously you could point to a number of fundamental aspects, um, and that's fine. If you want to discuss these charts, then check out this Telegram channel, which you can find in the description below. And if you want to support the channel and get premium content, I do publish a weekly newsletter where I go through different um, ideas and I publish the risk metric for Bitcoin, Ether, and Litecoin, um, amongst some, some other stuff, even looking at traditional markets. So if you guys like that, then check out the Patreon channel in the description below. Um, so I hope you guys enjoyed the content. Uh, a lot of people were asking for this, so I just wanted to provide an update, provide the data to, to show why I think 10,000 Ether is on the cards in the next bull run, um, and we'll follow along. I mean, the video is public, so we'll, we'll, we'll follow along the next few years and see what happens. So I hope you guys subscribe, and I will see you, see you guys next time. Bye.